This is our Omega installation step-by-step -step video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about a new basement insulation system. It's called Omega and it's made by Nadura. It's basically a three-in-one insulation system so it takes care of your framing, your insulating and your vapor barrier all in one step. This is the second time we've installed this system. The first time was actually with my friend Damien and Maggie and their son Lucas and they were actually instrumental in helping us figure out a system in order to install this properly. Now the manufacturer will tell you hey you can apply this Nadura just straight onto the concrete it's so easy you just slap them up and, and you're done it's like nothing but when you start thinking about it, it's like okay well no we have to actually put a little more thought into it and so this video is really just focusing on how to do it yourself all the steps smash together really quickly one two three four five You need at least a four foot level and you if you had a four foot well four foot level with a straight edge or you go with the fancy six to ten foot level we used a laser pointer because it was super handy circular saw impact two drills is nice so you stop switching bits out all the time now we used a roof and nailer you'll see why and where um, you'll need at least some roof hand roofing nails you need a spray foam gun hammer drill wedge anchors, you're going to need 5 inch and 6 inch concrete screws. We used an air nailer, you could just use screws, doesn't matter, uh, handsaw, rasp, tin snips, now a 3 inch drill bit, a quarter inch drill bit, a countersink, a T30 driver for the Tapcons, they come with the kit, um, vacuum. So this is the system I'm talking about. This is a three and a half inch sheet foam. They come in four by eights. We'll get into the details after. Uh, Nadura also makes two and five eighths thick, the three and a half like this, and three and seven eighths. So we use three and a half to match two by fours, you'll see in a sec. So it comes with the wood strips, and that's the most genius part, because you can add the sheet foam, but your nailing strips are built in. It stops thermal bridging, gives you the full insulation value and uh, super easy to install. So let's show you how to do it the proper way. We've done a bunch of testing. We actually, we're gonna get to the step-by-step -step right now and then at the end, we're gonna just add some bonus features. So we're gonna show you how to deal with the inside corners. We might do a cost comparison. It all depends on how long the video is, but this information will come out, whether it's in this video or another one. We're gonna show you in a separate video how to do electrical as well. Okay, so let's jump into it, show you how it's done. So everyone, say hi to Luke. Luke's uh, actually a dual ticketed. He's got his pipe fitter and he's been with me for eight years, four years of his apprenticeship, four years is now a journeyman carpenter. Luke's gonna be the man you're gonna see doing all the fancy steps. And so step number one, first thing you wanna do is basically determine where your concrete walls are at. I actually even told Luke, I was like, Luke, Check this out, like my walls are pretty straight. I don't think we're gonna have much shimming or anything to do until we started holding the level up and just noticing how bad and how out of plumb these walls are. So really, in a nutshell, really quickly, we're gonna smash on a bottom plate and a top plate. We're gonna frame out our window openings and then after that, we'll show you all the details, but that's essentially what we're doing before we install the panels. Okay, Luke, let's show them how bad these walls are. Luke's gonna hold the level plumb and just check how it compares to the wall it's wavy it's lumpy and it's way out of plumb here's another shot of it just to show you this panel set true look you didn't wave to the folks <laughs> sweet okay so Basically what you want to do is go around and figure out if your walls are leaning in or out. So all of these walls are leaning outward. And so we went around and just checked everything. Essentially what we did is then we know that we can install our bottom plate first. We kind of went, okay, off of 
the lumpiest part. So I would hold the level true. Luke would make a mark down there. We'd pull a string and we basically were going, okay, we want to be three and three quarters from the part of the concrete wall that sticks out the most. So after we would determine that around the whole basement, then we chalked our bottom plate because we knew the top was going to lean out and there's going to be a bigger gap at the top. So next we just chalked all our lines out. And then from there, what Luke and I did is we went around and now we have the bottom plate there, but if you imagine your chalk line there, we just held the, this as the face of the wall. Now, whether you have a four foot level or a, a one fancy one like this, if you have a shorter one, just get a straight edge or a two by four to help transfer the lines. Essentially I'd hold it level and Luke would go around and he would measure to make sure that we had at least three and three quarters to the concrete wall. So once you know you have proper clearance, you can transfer the bottom chalk line up to the top. Now, like I said, you can do that with a level. We used a laser pointer and then we just made a few marks, chalked all your lines for your top plates. So after your top plates are chalked out, then any joists that are parallel, you want to install backing. So Luke installed one there. And then from the inside wall, he went two foot centers. And that way, when you're doing your ceiling drywall, it's going to land up on every sheet. Four foot sheet is actually going to land on the center of that block. Get a two foot mark. And then your drywall is always going to land up halfway on a block when you do your ceiling drywall. So next, just install your bottom plates, then install your top plates. And then after that, you're going to want to frame around all your window openings. Here's an example of how we frame this one window opening. I'm not going to do a ton of, well, I'm not going to show you exactly where and how to do this, but I just want to point out that we did two sills here because it's such a long opening. If I did one, and it crowns real bad, then I have a wavy wall. So we opposite crown these two, and that keeps this straight, and then the foam panel sits in there later. So next you're gonna use some shingle nails, and you're gonna set this inch and a half by inch and a half light gauge angle. And so you're gonna install that on the bottom plates, you're gonna install it on the top plates, you're gonna go under your windows with it, and it sometimes doesn't even hurt to put it on the sides where your window openings are. Now when Luke was doing this, he actually had a little spacer block and we cheated because we have an air nailer. So we used a roof and nailer to hammer these in, but just using that little spacer block allowed you to go flush to the back, really easy, quick way to do that. The point of the angle is that when you're installing the panels and you'll see the next steps, when you screw it, you're not pushing the panel too far out of the way and you're not constantly fighting with it to try to keep it flush to your plates. And now you're ready to install the panels. So now all the prep work's out of the way. We showed you all that. Now the panels are gonna be super slick to install. Now you get to watch Luke do his work. You need at least a four foot level. And you, if you had a four foot, well, four foot level with a straight edge or you go with the fancy six to 10 foot level. We used a laser pointer because it was super handy. Um, circular saw, impact, two drills is nice so you stop switching bits out all the time. Now we used a roof and nailer, you'll see why and where. Um, you'll need at least some roof hand roofing nails. You need a spray foam gun, hammer drill, wedge anchors. You're gonna need five inch and six inch concrete screws. We used an air nailer. You could just use screws, doesn't matter. Uh, handsaw, rasp, tin snips. Now a three inch drill bit, a quarter inch drill bit, a countersink, a T30 driver for the Tapcons, they come with the kit. Um, vacuum. Test it girl, test it. And some mad skills, but you'll get those after watching this video. Hey everyone. Oh boy. Oh, I gotta be, gotta be cool, right? That was I said the last time we filmed. I gotta be cool, more cool. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get it going.